Okay, so physical therapy. We're going to go a little bit more in depth to the. Uh, about this topic um, because physical therapy can be really helpful for a lot of the different ailments uh, that we discussed today. So what is physical therapy? Well I went online and got the definition of physical therapy off of Wikipedia <laughs> um, and it says there is the remediation of impairment and disabilities and the promotion of mobility, functional ability, quality of life and movement potential through examination, evaluation, diagnosis and physical intervention. So it sounded really wordy to me, um, but the point of physical therapy is that it helps with movements, it helps with function, and it improves quality of life. Those are the things that I think we really want to take away from that big lengthy definition, is that it's something that gets an animal to move a little bit better, function a little bit better, and has improvements on that animal's life. Um, physical therapy has been around for centuries, and I'm sure it's been around for quite a while in animals as far as its documentation of people really using it a lot in animals or starting to use it a lot started in the 1980s is when people really started kind of utilizing it more for our pets. We mainly use it for neurological and musculoskeletal problems, so problems of the nervous system or the mus muscles and skeletal system. Um, it's really great because there are a lot of facilities that are starting to offer physical therapy for pets. And what's wonderful here in Southern California is that we do have a facility called CARE. It stands for um, California Animal Rehabilitation. They do a lot of dogs and cats, but what's wonderful about them is they do rabbits. Um, they're unique. Not a lot of facilities do rabbits, but Thankfully, here in Southern California, we do have a facility that does deal with rabbits. And um, I've sent some patients down to their facility before to have physical therapy done by their physical therapist and have seen some really great results with those animals that have gone down there. Of course, there are other facilities too, and I'm sure more will pop up in the coming years because people do recognize that physical therapy is a really good thing to help animals. And... The thing that I think is important is a pet really should be seen by a licensed vet or a physical, licensed physical therapist in order to learn which movements, which um, exercises they should be doing for their particular animal, for their particular problem. Physical therapy is something, if it's done wrong, you can unfortunately injure the animal. So it's something that we need to have somebody teach us what's appropriate for this individual so that we can really help it out and not cause any further problems. There are different techniques that are used based upon what part of the body we're trying to work out. So we're going to go over a few of the different types of physical therapy that are available. Um, passive range of motion is a real common one and a, a one that is often started initially when we're starting different physical therapy exercises. This is one of the first ones that a lot of people will go to. And passive range of motion has a lot of different benefits. I put up all those different types of um, benefits that have been seen. It helps healing of cartilage defects in joints. It reduces cartilage um, destruction following infections in the joint. It reduces joint stiffness. It reduces inflammation in the joints. Um, it preserves muscle mass. And then it allows for a neuromuscular re-education. So basically those nerves and muscles are talking to each other once again. What's great is that a lot of these studies actually have been done in rabbits. So research that has been done is able to be applied to our, our pets, you know, which is really good because unfortunately a lot of different medications and things are, the research sometimes is done in dogs or cats, you know, a species and we have to extrapolate it to a rabbit, but it's really, we're fortunate that a lot of physical therapies actually was, you know, kind of studied first in rabbits and then applied to other animals. So with um, passive range of motion, I usually recommend that it be a two-person job. It seems to be a little bit easier that way. One person has the job of holding the rabbit and restraining the rabbit. I put a couple of pictures up of what that restraint looks like, where one individual is holding the rabbit by tucking um, the bottom with one hand and then holding the rabbit with the other, the forelimbs right over um, their other hand. And then the second person, what that individual is doing, that's the one who's actually doing the physical therapy. That person is placing their hands on the limb where they're going to be working, and they're going to be putting one above the joint that's the problem, one below the joint that's the problem, so that they can really work on that joint. 
they're going to then gently um, and slowly flex and extend that joint and sometimes you can do actual bicycle motion so rather than working on just one joint you can work on multiple joints to really get multiple joints moving so here's a picture of a rabbit um, that is demonstrating some physical therapy so the rabbit is being held and we're going to be working on this joint in particular right here you'll notice the hands are placed below and above the joint it's kind of in a relaxed position and then we're kind of stretching it out to do real extension and then we're bringing it back in for flexion so just a, a passive range of motion that's going on with that rabbit um, as far as how much range of motion you should be doing with a rabbit it really kind of depends on the the issue that you're being doing the physical therapy for. Um, a lot of times we start off slow and then gradually work them up. So 15 to 20 repetitions of that passive range of motion two to four times a day is often a, a good starting place. And there have been different studies that have shown sometimes doing a whole lot more than that can be really beneficial. But we always want to start slow. Just like when, you know, people are starting a new exercise regimen you don't jump into it and go crazy all of a sudden. You need to kind of gradually work yourself up to it to really uh, have the best effects and best uh, benefits for your health. Stretching is another good thing that can be done for these guys. So the benefit of stretching is it reduces that muscle atrophy and improves the flexibility of joints. Um, how you actually do it is you place the joint or joints in a sort of normal static position in the normal position they want to fall in and then you gently stretch those muscles out to the range that is comfortable for the animal you never want to extend beyond a range that's comfortable for the animal because you could potentially injure them if you're doing that you then hold them in that stretched position for about 15 to 20 seconds if the animal does kind of jerk back that's okay let them do that you know kind of remain calm and slowly try it again for them. If they're jerking back a lot, that may be an indication that that hurts them. So we need to maybe do a little bit less of a stretch for that individual until it's comfortable at a point where we can do a, a better stretch for it. And so there's the caution for stretching that we never want to force that limb beyond um, what is comfortable for the animal or beyond the normal range of motion too. We don't want to extra stretch things because then we can really do some damage. So just a picture, this is a rabbit foot, um, where it's having its limb totally stretched out. Okay, so other exercises that can be done, balancing and proprioception exercises. These are ones where we're really trying to re-educate those muscles again. We're thinking about the uh, neuromuscular re-education when we're, when we're dealing with these exercises. So balance exercises require sort of a rapid response to a change in a surface that we balance. Um, proprioception exercises helps an animal to be aware of where their limbs are in space. Um, so lots of different benefits. Again, improves balance, coordination, strength. It reduces in humans the risks of falls. Probably has similar effects in rabbits. Um, and in humans, it also improves their ability to have a better walking speed, better endurance. Probably the same thing in rabbits. There's different types of exercises that fall into these balancing and proprioception exercises. So the first one is the body sling. Um, it's good for rabbits that have like a hind end paresis or paralysis problem. And so what you do is you use a little towel, can roll it up, and actually sling it underneath the rabbit to hold that individual up. You can then place their feet into a normal position and do sort of gentle lowering and raising of that towel to make them put weight on those limbs at various um, pressures. So there's just a picture of a rabbit um, to show the placement of a towel if we're working on the hind, hind end, we're really trying to support that hind end and then we can just gradual down and up sort of movements. This is an example of a rabbit that um, it's basically a cart that this rabbit is using, but it's slung up a little bit differently. Um, this is a, for a rabbit that's going to stay in this thing a little bit more longer term than just someone holding it up. But it's doing the same sort of exercise for the animal as it would be if you were just holding it in a, in a sling. A towel sling, I should say. 
Okay, so weight shifting is another exercise that can be done. Um, it's good for both hind and, and forelimb issues. You're going to gently place the rabbit in a normal standing position. Make sure those limbs are where they should be. And then gently kind of push the rabbit from side to side so that we're kind of forcing it to put more weight on one side for a moment and then shifting it to the other side, forcing it to put more weight on the other side. And just doing sort of gentle rocking back and forth, making them put more or less weight um, and doing it sort of more of this rhythmic kind of movement for them. So this rabbit, I held him up for the picture so that you could kind of get a, a better idea of what's going on with his feet. Um, with the hind limbs, if we're working on that left hind limb there, he's being held up so he's putting more weight on that foot. And then I'm shifting his weight to the side there so that he's forced to put more pressure on that side. Another thing that can be used is a balance board. Um, this is where you use sort of a, this flat surface that is balanced on top of something. And there are actual balancing boards, and I'll show you pictures of it, but sort of an at-home balance board is you can get like a towel and put a flat surface on top with a rabbit. Sometimes it's best to use like a large litter box and have the rabbit inside of that. Now the thing is, is whatever is that flat surface is, is it has to have some sort of grip to it. You don't want it smooth. You don't want the animal, when it's trying to balance on something, slip off. So you can use like a rubber mat um, or a towel on the bottom of a litter box and then have the rabbit sit on top of that and then balance that litter box on top of a towel. And then you can do same that sort of same exercise where you're doing a rocking back and forth and you're trying to have that animal, again, just bear more weight on different limbs and gently allow it to use those muscles a little bit more than it would um, on its own. Here's a picture of a dog. I couldn't find a good picture of a rabbit on a balancing board, um, but the, the um, idea is the same. This is what a balancing board looks like, the ones that you can actually purchase, where it's this flat surface that has a rugged um, texture on top so we won't fall, and then a little ball on the underside so that we're able to rock back and forth. And what the dog is doing up here is he's actually rocking, they're rocking him from side to side um, and causing him to just, again, put more weight on one side than the other. There's also exercise balls, exercise rolls. Um, towards the beginning of the lecture, when I first mentioned physical therapy, there was a picture of a rabbit on an exercise ball. If you notice that picture, that rabbit was really tiny and that ball was really big. Um, that's good for you know the physical therapists who are working on the rabbit, but at home, we don't want to potentially injure our rabbits, so I tend to not recommend those exercise balls at home. Um, I tend to recommend like a roll instead, and again, a towel can be very helpful in just rolling that thing up to be used as what we are balancing our body on. And so basically you can roll that towel up and then have the animal rest on that towel in different ways to, again, put weight on different parts of the body, whatever part of the body it is that you're working on. So this rabbit here that's demonstrating the towel rolled up is going to be working more on those hind limbs. He's having pressure taken off of the front limbs and putting more pressure on those hind limbs, so he just has to bear more weight there. If it was the front limbs that we had a problem with, then you can obviously move that roll to the back end for the rabbit to take pressure off the back, more onto the front. Okay, so just a little disclaimer with physical therapy is... It's important to know that improvements may be slow and maybe kind of small. Sometimes physical therapy can really do some wonderful things for animals um, and really make dra dramatic improvements. And sometimes it just makes small improvements for the animal. It doesn't always have a you know 100% guaranteed turnaround that if you do all these physical therapy exercises, it's going to help resolve this issue completely. Some of these problems are really permanent long-term things that are going to last for the animal, but physical therapy can be utilized in these different scenarios that animals can um, have disabilities in to help things from preventing from getting worse and give them as much strength as they possibly can have to deal with their ailment that they have. Other modalities that we have are going to be 
acupuncture, laser therapy, massage. Um, Dr. Tiffany here at the hospital does do a lot of these therapies over at CARE. They also do a lot of these therapies as well. And so we really are seeing some great benefits with these different types of treatments for, for disabilities and elderly rabbits. The way that these things actually work, um, it reduces inflammation, it stimulates new cell growth, it encourages blood flow to tissues and also encourages edema or fluids that are out kind of loose in the tissues to help get back into circulation and, and not be staying out in the tissues. So I'm not really going to go into acupuncture or laser therapy. There are going to be upcoming lectures. And specifically, Zoo Corner is hopefully going to be getting a lecture um, from CARE, the actual rehab facility. I believe it's going to be in March um, of 2015, where they're hoping to get one of those guys to come out here and, and do a lecture more on this topic for you guys. So I'm not going to be a spoiler for them. So we'll learn more about that later. I'll briefly talk about massage and give just a couple of examples of massage things that can be done for rabbits. Um, so what massage is, is we're using our hands to apply gentle pressure um, to different muscles and different joints, different parts of the body. And you can work on just one area or you can work on multiple areas in the animal. You should have an animal that is nice and relaxed when we are doing massage with them. Kind of like that rabbit in that little cartoon there seems very relaxed. That's what we want all of our rabbits to look like when we're giving massages. <laughs> So there's different techniques that you can do. Um, stroking is basically taking your hands and putting it all along the rabbit's body, um, gently putting pressure as you're moving it slowly across the body. That's what's happening in the picture up at the top there, is my hands are on either side of that rabbit, and I'm gently putting pressure, but not too firm of pressure, just sort of moderate pressure and working my way down that rabbit. There are um, compression techniques where you identify a particular muscle that you want to work on and you can place the palm of your hand or the heel of your hand if you have a small rabbit maybe even your fingers um, just over that area that you want to work on uh, and apply just sort of direct gentle pressure to that particular area for somewhere around 15 seconds it doesn't have to be perfectly 15 seconds like it says on there but somewhere around that um, and then you can move to another area work on another muscle and kind of go back and forth you know you're working on different muscles and then percussion is sort of this on off a little bit more rapid um, movement on top of a particular muscle so on and off pressure more rapidly again Kara is going to talk a little bit more about uh, physical therapy and massage in particular for these guys a couple of pictures um, the one is doing compression on the top and then we're doing percussion on the back there Okay, and we also talked about encouraging exercise for these guys. Sometimes people get concerned that an animal that has disabilities um, can't really move around as much, is has to be kept quiet, has to be prevented from moving. But when we get into chronic stages of these things, sometimes lack of mobility really is not helpful for these guys and can make problems worse. So getting them to exercise can really help the animal. It's also mentally stimulating for them too. It must be really, you know, dull to have to sit around all the time and not have changes in your environment. So we want to make sure that we're keeping these animals happy um, and keeping their minds active and is part of that. So I put a bunch of pictures of rabbits up outside doing different things. The two kind of up at the top there are rabbits that are not disabled. We have one just kind of running around and playing in a box. But then all these other ones down here are all different disabled rabbits. But all those rabbits are outside doing things, having a good time. Um, the two on the bottom have hind end paralysis issues, but you can see this rabbit here is in his cart. He's getting around, he's exploring. Um, and then this bunny over here who also has hind end paralysis, she doesn't have a cart, but she's out in the environment getting to explore a, you know, a area with weeds and grass and find different things to do. You know. Her life doesn't have to be dull. We want to keep her active. We want to keep her moving. We want her to use those muscles as much as she possibly can so that she, thank you, um, is able to, you know, have an okay life. And the rabbit up at the top with his head tilt, again, he doesn't seem to really care that he has a head tilt. He, that's just him. So.